I was chatting with a friend and she asked, Yes, I said. I believe so. She continued. Well, as they say in the US, that's the six million dollar question. But not only is it a difficult question, it's also a delicate, sensitive one for scores of people. I said, that's a tough one. Honestly, I don't know yet. I'm still thinking about it and working on it. Science has been hard pressed to prove the existence of God. I imagine that in some sectors of science, physicists don't believe it's a worthwhile endeavor or if they do they focus on the physical universe instead here they have worked centuries to understand exactly how nature works and how it all began the announcement from CERN in July 2012 about the discovery of the Higgs boson is phenomenal largely because it may well explain not just how matter began for example stars planets and life itself but also more importantly how the universe was created in fact some have dubbed the Higgs boson as the God particle it was well-known physicist Stephen Hawking who remarked in 2010 that it is not necessary to invoke God because physicists could now explain how the wild and woolly cosmos began, that is, the physical universe, through physics. Before I tell you my reaction to the esteemed professor's remark, let me say that the Wall Street Journal published a well-argued debate between two thinkers, Karen Armstrong and Richard Dawkins, essentially pitting science against religion. We all seem to love a debate, and as is the nature of such, we are expected to take clear position and defend that position. Fine. Constructive debate is good. Such discussion allows for a sharper, more enriching knowledge about a subject. But my question is, are science and religion necessarily antithetical? In other words, are they innately at odds with one another? and maybe even mutually exclusive? I lived in Dubai for many years and was coaching a Muslim colleague on her leadership development. In part, our conversation focused on Islam and the expectations of God. Muslims are not just expected to have faith in Allah's will, she explained, they're also expected to think, to reason, to analyze and apply logic. Put differently, both science and religion are critical in the day-to-day -day lives of many people. My reaction to Professor Hawking's remark about God not being necessary? I took umbrage at it. I thought it was a foolish remark. Millions of people from all sorts of religion most certainly believe that God exists, and yes, God is necessary. Different religions have varying views of God, but many do believe that God created the universe. That humankind began with Adam and Eve, which many Christians believe. Is this to say that the evolutionary process that Charles Darwin expounded on is suspect or worse sacrilegious? Some people would say so. We can forgive Professor Hawking, I think, for falling into the common trap of either or. That is the common tendency to take a side on something and dismiss other sides. Indeed, his work on the physical nature and origins of the universe has been a brilliant illuminating effort. But even with a modestly open mind, we may consider the possibility that God indeed created the universe. Northwestern University, where I studied for my PhD, subscribed 
to the scientist practitioner model for clinical psychologists. As part of years of training in diagnosis and therapy, we were duly schooled in the scientific method. So I have a fundamental understanding for how science works and fully appreciate its power to help us understand everything from ourselves to the wider milieu that Hawking and Einstein focused on. But as any scientist is expected to cover in a publication, limitations are part and parcel of writing about their findings. For example, where were the shortcomings of their methodology? Up to what point do their findings speak beyond which more research is required? What questions warrant further studies? The tripartite model aims to reconcile science and religion. It recognizes the importance and power of both in our day-to-day -day lives and our professional endeavors. It also reminds us to put these in their proper perspectives, that is, how far they can reach and beyond what point they are limited. Here's what I told my friend with whom I was chatting more specifically. Proving the existence of God is outside the purview of science. So how do we prove this? We have to use religious, not scientific, frames of reference, methodology, and language. I believe that faith is one key method for proving the existence of God. So let me relate a personal story. I work for a manager who is the number two leader in our big department. My younger colleagues looked at her with a combination of disdain and fear. I saw her as a troubled lady who sometimes acted in an immature, unprofessional manner. In one very tense episode with her direct boss, the head of the department, she angrily and repeatedly shouted at him. Her voice reverberated past the closed door and some colleagues were so disturbed that they had to walk out of the office. Personally, I prayed that she go away, perhaps get fired. Literally a week and a half later, a good friend of mine in the department called me and said off the bat, Ron, there is a God. In an instant, I knew exactly what she meant and I exclaimed, oh my God. That number two manager just resigned, she said. My face felt flush, and I was astounded by the notion of God indeed answering my prayer. I mentioned nothing about my prayers to my good friend as it was a private matter, really. But the fact that the very first thing out of her mouth was, Ron, there is a God, floored me. It was as though she had read my mind and heard my prayers without knowing it. Now, of course, there can be a host of understandable, logical explanations for this. It doesn't require a whole lot of thinking to reason that this unprofessional manager was in career jeopardy in the organization and that she was not going to last long in her position. But this is just one of several instances where God answered my prayers. So, without diminishing alternative explanations, I can tell you that my faith through prayer is one way I know that God exists. The tripartite model houses a trinity. Besides science and religion, art is very much part of what we have to take into account to understand ourselves and our universe. Art assumes the third vertex on the triangle I showed earlier. Some of us make the choice to devote our lives and our career on one camp. This is perfectly well and good, of course. They do a deep dive into a particular field and perhaps assume a singular focus on certain issues. But regardless of how brilliant and tectonic the discovery the Higgs boson is, for example, this and the very science in which this was ultimately springboarded can explain only so much that it is, after all, just one explanation. There are other explanations about the origin of matter 
and life from different platforms of knowledge and learning. The tripartite model aspires to be a complete epistemology. Deep dive specialists notwithstanding, the more holistic understanding of ourselves and our universe requires, I posit, analytic, scientific, creative, artistic, spiritual, religious, perspectives, methodology, and terminology. For now, let me suggest the following queries to help us reconcile these three and tap into the richness of such an epistemic framework. Can the creativity of Mozart or Picasso help shed new light into quandaries that physicists face? Can poets benefit from a more analytic technical review of their verse and a more systematic approach to writing poetry? Can we allow faith and reason not just to coexist, but also to complement one another and shed light on areas that the other cannot? Can we allow scientists to bring their personal beliefs in religious worships, for example, in some way to their endeavor? Can some religious practices be subjected to the rigors of science and to more systematic forms of inquiry? Can we revise our long-held depictions of God, Jesus, saints, and angels in other, fresher, more creative ways? Can painters create works that exalt the religious zeitgeist of an era, the beliefs and practices of their patrons and neighbors? Reference Caravaggio. The tripartite model is an all-encompassing epistemic method process and evaluation. It is the platform on which absolutely all knowledge is based and integrated and is therefore the framework from which I will derive my theory of everything. It is the Tao of grasping anything and everything, from the finite to the infinite, from the known to the unknown, from the imagined to the unimagined. As you can see, there is quite a lot to think about and work through. This is an introduction, and a tripartite model is a work in progress.